What's up everyone, Rob from Ishimoto. Today we're going to install our silicone radiator hose kit in your 2016 Plus Camaro SS. Let's get started. Tools recommended for installation include T15 Torx, seven and 10 millimeter sockets, quarter inch drive ratchet, driver and extensions, a panel tool, pop clip pliers, and assorted pliers depending on your preference. Installation time is two to three hours. Installation difficulty is a three out of five. Set the vehicle on an automotive lift or raise it with a jack and place it securely on jack stands. Refer to your owner's manual for safe lifting points if you are unsure. Remove the five screws that secure the air diverter to the driver's side of the vehicle and remove the air diverter. Repeat this process on the passenger side. Remove the eight screws that secure the lower edge of the front bumper. Remove the four screws and six bolts that secure the splash panel to the underside of the vehicle. Place a drain pan beneath the pet cock on the radiator. Attach a short length of hose over the drain on the radiator to reduce spillage and loosen the pet cock until coolant begins to flow from the drain tube. Remove the cap on the expansion tank to expedite the draining process. Remove the 10 lug nuts that secure the front wheels to the vehicle and remove the wheels. This will provide access to the fender liner and the hose connections at the secondary radiator. Remove the seven screws and one pop clip that secure the driver's side fender liner to the vehicle. Unseat the liner from the fender and pull it back to expose the front of the wheel well. Remove the seven screws and one pop clip that secure the passenger side fender liner to the vehicle. Unseat the liner from the fender and pull it back to expose the front of the wheel well. The cooling system should be mostly empty by now, so go back and tighten the pet cock on the radiator. Compress the spring clamp that secures the upper radiator hose to the thermostat housing and move the clamp down the hose. Then remove the hose from the thermostat housing. Compress the clamp that secures the upper radiator hose to the radiator and move the clamp down the hose. Then remove the hose from the vehicle. Our vehicle had a Mishimoto temperature sensor adapter installed for testing purposes, so yours will look a bit different. Compress the spring clamp that secures the sound generator tube to the induction hose and pull the sound generator tube off of the port. The plastic elbow will remain in the induction hose. Loosen the worm gear clamp that secures the induction hose to the throttle body. Then pull the induction hose off of the throttle body. Disconnect the CCV hose from the induction hose. Depress the gray tab that protrudes from the connector and pull the hose off the port. Loosen the worm gear clamp that secures the induction hose to the stock air box. Then remove the induction hose from the vehicle. Disconnect the mass airflow sensor. Unlock the connector by sliding the red lock tab out of the connector, then depress the black tab and slide the connector off the sensor. Unlock the clip that secures the sound generator hose to the airbox and lift the hose out of the clip. Remove the stock airbox by lifting directly upward. The airbox is secured to the vehicle with three pegs and grommets. Compress the clamp that secures the lower radiator hose to the engine and slide the clamp down the hose, then remove the hose from the engine. Release the lower radiator hose from the plastic clip that connects it to the small coolant hose below the water outlet. Compress the clamp that secures the lower radiator hose to the radiator and slide the clamp down the hose. Then remove the hose from the radiator. Pull back the driver's side fender liner and locate the outer coolant hose on the auxiliary radiator. Compress the clamp that secures this connection and slide it down the hose. Then remove the hose from the fitting. Pull back the passenger side fender liner and locate the inner coolant hose on the auxiliary radiator. Release the tree clip that secures this hose to the body of the vehicle. Compress the clamp that secures the hose to the radiator and slide the clamp down the hose. Then remove the hose from the fitting. Remove the screw and pop clip that secure the rear portion of the fender liner on the driver's side. 
Remove the three bolts that secure the plastic panel to the underside of the crossmember on the driver's side of the vehicle. Then remove the plastic panel. Look through the hole behind the panel you just removed to locate the last coolant line connection. Place a drain pan underneath the hose. Compress the clamp that secures the coolant line and slide it up the hose. Then remove the hose from the coolant pipe. From inside the wheel wells, lead the auxiliary radiator hoses into the engine bay. Do this on both sides. Separate the two tree clips that secure the coolant bypass tube to the fan shroud. Take note of the way each section of the lower hose is routed, then remove it from the vehicle. Install the Mishimoto lower hose. Because it has so many parts, this hose can be a bit unwieldy to install. Just take your time and pay attention to where each section is routed. Get the main body of the hose situated, then lead the driver's side auxiliary radiator hose into the wheel well. Route the end of the hose that attaches to the engine underneath the coolant pipe. Now lead the passenger side auxiliary hose underneath the frame rail and into the wheel well. To aid with installation, lubricate the inside lip of a radiator hose with fresh engine coolant. Slip one of the provided worm gear clamps over the engine end of the lower radiator hose and install the hose over the water outlet on the engine, but don't tighten the clamp yet. Slip one of the provided worm gear clamps over the radiator side of the lower radiator hose and install the hose to the radiator, but don't tighten the clamp yet. Slip one of the provided worm gear clamps over the auxiliary radiator hose located in the driver's side wheel well. Install the hose over the fitting on the radiator and tighten the clamp over the bead roll. Slip one of the provided worm gear clamps over the auxiliary radiator hose in the passenger side wheel well. Install the hose over the fitting on the radiator and tighten the clamp over the bead roll. Slip one of the provided worm gear clamps over the last connection on the lower radiator hose, located just above the steering rack on the driver's side of the vehicle. Install the hose over the coolant pipe and tighten the clamp over the bead roll of the pipe. Now go back and tighten the clamps where the lower radiator hose attaches to the radiator and the engine. Slip two of the provided worm gear clamps over the Mishimoto upper radiator hose and install the hose to the radiator and the thermostat housing. Align the clamps with the bead rolls on the connections and tighten them completely. Secure the coolant bypass tube to the fan shroud with the two integrated tree clips. Lower the airbox into place. Align the mounting pegs with the grommets and push the airbox down to engage them. Connect the wiring harness to the mass airflow sensor and lock the connector with the red tab. Install the induction hose over the airbox and throttle body, then tighten the hose clamps that secure it. Connect the CCV hose to the induction hose. Compress the spring clamp on the sound generator tube and connect the tube to the elbow on the induction hose. Before you reinstall the fender liners and wheels, it's a good idea to make sure there will be no leaks. Fill the cooling system with pre-mixed GM approved coolant through the reservoir filler neck. Start the engine and allow it to idle with the cap off. Turn the heater control valve on the vehicle's HVAC unit to full hot and put the fan on low. Monitor the engine temperature and coolant level in the reservoir. Add coolant as needed to maintain a proper level in the reservoir and check all connections for leaks. If the vehicle begins to overheat or coolant starts to overflow from the reservoir, Shut the engine off and allow it to cool before continuing. Once the vehicle is fully warmed up and the coolant level is stabilized, shut the engine off. Reinstall the panel to the driver's side of the subframe and secure it with the original hardware.
Push the fender liners back into place and make sure the edges are fully seated behind the ducting. Then secure both liners with the original hardware. Install the splash panel to the underside of the vehicle and secure it with the original hardware. Install both air diverters to the vehicle and secure them with the original hardware. If you forgot which side is which, look on the underside of the air diverters. The driver side will be marked LH and the passenger side will be marked RH. Install the four screws that secure the splash panel to the fender liner. Install the eight screws that secure the front edge of the bumper. Reinstall the front wheels and secure them with the 10 lug nuts. Torque the lug nuts to 140 foot-pounds in a star pattern. The engine should be relatively cool at this point. Top off the coolant and install the expansion tank pressure cap. Coolant level should be checked once more after putting in some miles. Remember that the cooling system should never be opened when the engine is hot. Now that you have the radiator hoses installed, double check for any leaks and fire up your Camaro for a test drive. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you head out.